on it. Well, hello, I'm Harry Bryan with NYSHA's Corporation, and uh, we are here at Morgantown, West Virginia. Uh, we are with Michael Sparoff with Tri-State Exterminating, and his client, Jason Withers, with the Atreus Restaurant Group here in Morgantown. Uh, we're here today to talk about uh, some of the challenges that we have in commercial kitchens, uh, most notably uh, small flies. And so uh, I wanted to uh, interview Michael here and get some insights on some of the challenges that they're having. Mike, uh, share with some of the some of the first steps that you did when you started uh, working with Jason. It was communication, having that open communication between yourself and the client, that is key. But not only being able to communicate, but being able to act on those communications. When you come into a restaurant, a bar, any kind of commercial food kitchen area you have to I could tell everybody exactly what to do but if they don't do their part you'll never get success you didn't just come in there and say you know what this is dirty this is dirty this is dirty I mean you basically no, you just, can't uh, you just you can't come in and just downgrade somebody of what it right. is it's like because in what they did he, he keeps like it, a, <laughs> so. he keeps a clean kitchen right but it's digging into it a little further with those nooks and crannies and tight spots that you don't typically see and don't typically look for whenever you can tell them and train them of what to look for and how to go about it then you put the proper systems in place as far as treatment you have great success Jason was he different than most pest show companies that would come in and, and talk about these issues he absolutely was he came in and had a step more involvement in wanting to talk about the problem because we already had one pest control company who we clearly weren't getting results through, but I also couldn't get anybody on the phone or even get anybody to come out of the time where they would talk to me and say, here's the problem, here's the issue, here's where we see we could do better. So having somebody stop and say, hey, my name's Mike, I'm the new service tech on this, here's my company, here's what we do, here's how we'd like to treat things, I had to take a step back and say, oh wait, I get to talk to somebody this time? <laughs> Is it, well, then, it, that, that being leads to this next question, though, is it common that there's gaps in communication when it comes to oh, pest control professional and restaurant owners? It, common, yeah. I mean, it's it's lack of communication. You just, they don't do it. I have seen, heard horror stories of other clients that, you know, I've never talked to my technician. They come in and out of here, they're in and out in five minutes, and I don't, I may not even see them. I don't even know these here. I see a bill. But yet we still have problems. Right. I've chased technicians out the door and said, hey, wait a minute, before you leave, you have on this slip that everything looks clean. And I know for a fact that I had three areas out there that still needed treated because I was literally writing out, we use things called talk to me cards that we will fill out to give direction to our staff in case we're not going to be there for a shift. And I was making a list of items for people to clean. This is another restaurant, but same principle. And the gentleman had just marked, yeah, restaurant was clean on my slip. I was new to the restaurant. I knew it wasn't up to my standard yet. There's no way you marked clean on there. And this is why we still have bugs. Now, coming down here, I took over this restaurant after it had already been open for over a year. So I was coming into an existing situation. Mike was coming into an exist existing situation with an exterminator that did not get a grand result. And the first thing that we did after a first conversation was have a time to meet back up and get on our hands and knees together and look underneath the equipment and do a full wall-to-wall -wall inspection without the staff here after they had closed, after they had cleaned up to see, okay, where's the staff at? Where's the building at? Where do we need to be? I want to put you on the spot, okay? Okay. But what was, what was um, when Mike came to see you for the first time, what did he do that was just made you take a step back and go, okay, this is different, okay? Was there, was there something that, was there an angle that he had? Or was there a, a certain um, key words that he said that, that made sense to you? Or, was, or what was just... It was just the fact that he wanted to physically spend five to ten minutes looking together, verifying, and acknowledging. Nobody else does that. I can promise you in 20 years, I've never had a pest control partner that walked in the door 
and didn't sit down in a nice, pretty clean uniform and try to sell me something. To have somebody walk in that had some dirt on their knees that clearly did something before they came to see me, it wasn't a salesperson, it was the actual person that was going to be the technician. Okay. That was different. In other words, he put, the, he put the action behind the words. It wasn't just BS. I didn't have somebody right. say, hey, don't worry, we got this, we got this great chemical. He said, okay, I've got the chemical for A, B, and C. I see this, this, and this is troubleshooting. We're going to treat the drains with this. Here's how often we should treat them. No issue there, but you have to do this, this, and this, or else this won't work. Okay. Most people that would walk in the door and say that to a restaurateur are probably get told, oh, well, then go ahead and leave because we don't have time to do that. And you're telling me it won't work. So his honesty definitely made me take a step back, if you want to look at it from that point of view. But in addition, the fact that he wanted to engage to get a result. Because typically it's here, give me your money, I'll spray chemicals. So really, I mean, one of your most important products that you use is the product of communication. Yes. So uh, very good, excellent. All right. When Mike came in with his, uh, with his foamers, his True Tech equipment and everything, um, what went through your mind when you saw all the foaming going down the drains and all that sort of thing? I actually but, wasn't here to watch it. I just okay. got to see the results. But my management team that was here okay. said, what is happening? You'd have thought that they were bringing a plumbing system. <laughs> but the reality was that you were doing something that I've never heard of being done before. Okay. I've In all my years, and again, I've done light construction, I've been involved in things, I've done concrete work. I've installed plenty of sewer lines, both with septic and with standard old-fashioned plumbing. You can't treat an entire piece of pipe unless you fill it to capacity. So how would you ever treat a pipe in a restaurant that can never truly be filled to capacity? It's impossible. Right, it. Till now. So, I, okay, so you started doing the drain service. Uh, um, how often did you do that? Was it like once a week for four weeks? For four weeks, and yep. so you monitored the uh, the small fly activity, and you noticed that it, it was did. just dropping. Okay, there was yeah. no way not to notice that it was dropping. <laughs> <laughs> when you got you know customers sitting there swatting at fruit right. flies yeah. as they're trying to Literally. eat, you no, know, it's not, that's a true story. That's you know, I came in. You know, they closed at roughly eleven, and I came in right about eleven. But there was. Mm -hmm. couple there and they're just sitting there having drinks finishing up but yeah literally swatting at fruit flies okay so you knew that the activity at the bar so there was going to probably be some larvae or some uh, uh, breeding ground in that area so you literally got on your hands well, and knees and started digging well this was actually over at those booths across from the okay. bar but in learning about the fruit flies and the breeding grounds was probably somewhere in and around the bar area but the air movement pushed them over to where they were okay. there is what I, you know, because I could not find any reason for anything over there during the inspection other than the air movement itself. Okay. Right. Most so, places see. have fans and have constant air circulation and key points. The way the HVAC's designed here, there's a certain push. So if they get into that area and our fans run 24-7 because it has to circulate the air for the building, there's a spot where they're not going to be able to be, and there's going to be a spot where they can go. So that brings up another that brings up another thing because you know with the airflow is they 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 can literally be anywhere uh, yes. as far as the feeding sites you can literally be anywhere in the kitchen, and the airflow can kind of push, push them, them push yes. them from one area to another. And that's why you have to do a thorough inspection from right. one end to the other. Right, because not all small flies are associated with floor drains. No, they can be literally anywhere. Yeah. So yep. um, very good. So, so, so you got a happy customer. Um, he's, uh, you know, what's really, what's really fascinating about this is that this is just, this is a family of, it's a company that has a family of restaurants. So you have a success story here. So more than likely, the possibilities of earning more business at other yes. accounts. That, well, we're uh, already going to be moving up into some of our stores in Pennsylvania, depending upon how far he wants to travel and try to set up some of our stores on a routine so that he can make one trip, cover the stores, and then return. But realistically, why am I going to deal with lower quality and lower standards for mm -hmm. what we want to run? So you're willing, you're willing to pay a little bit extra 
for knowing that you're going to get the service of having no pests. Have we ever talked about price? Nope. No, never talked about price. If I get a result, then it's well worth it. To have a store that people come into that has a patio where you keep doors open constantly and you constantly have the outside area getting involved in and to not have a problem with bugs speaks volumes. Do you find small flies more challenging to control than, say, German cockroaches? It can be at times. It just each each situation is unique in itself, you know. But there again, it's seeking out the source of where it where's the, the problem at. And in commercial kitchens, it can be multiple different places. Right. They could come in on the tomatoes that came in, but by the time they get in here and they find a food source over here, the air moves them over here to the the pop dispenser and the syrup has fallen down around so yeah what came in at the tomatoes is now clear on the other side of the store and in the where the soda dispensers are so nine board d has been a a fantastic product to use great product fantastic that's good right. yeah the solution of the with the nine board d the dsv the back of zap using it in rotation stops the breeding of small flies and in some cases, German cockroaches. Very good. Um, well, folks, um, this is, um, we have a great success story with Michael and Jason. Uh, Jason being Michael's client. And so uh, you heard it here. Uh, they'll be bringing Michael into several other locations uh, to do battle against small flies and German cockroaches and other pests in those kitchens. So, um, so. I want to thank Michael and Jason for joining us here today to talk about some of their, their experiences with the uh, NYSHA Small Fly Program. And if you have any more questions, feel free to give us a call. We'd love to help you. Thank you.